Welcome to the We Larder podcast, episode three. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing what's hiding in my larder cupboard. I've got plenty of superfoods and basics and essential items in there. And I'm also going to be sharing what essential items I like to stock up on to save money. And I've also got some last minute cupboard meal ideas to take note of as well for those last minute lifesaver meals. My name is Angie Milne, I'm a mother of four and creator of the blog and YouTube channel, The Wee Larder. Join me as I share my passion for wholesome family food, natural living ideas and some organic gardening along the way. Welcome to The Wee Larder. So my pantry cupboard is actually called the larder in our house and we use it for storing all kinds of dried and tinned foods, some glass items and also some kitchen gadgets as well but mostly food supplies. We also have a separate dry goods area in the kitchen which is used to store opened items as we don't store opened items in our main larder cupboard due to the location and we just want to keep it as a long term storage area. So it's basically an old cupboard that's in the back hall so it's nice and cool and if we didn't have a fridge you could probably get away with storing some dried meats and matured and cheeses in here too. I've got a lot to learn on the cheese making though and don't have anything like that in there yet. So there was a door on our larder cupboard but I took it off and put up some lovely floral curtains and I'll tell you a little funny story actually. <laughs> um, the first curtain I put up on the larder cupboard door was actually my home sewn curtain with a lovely country style pheasant pattern on it. <laughs> I was so proud of my sewing skills and I attached the curtain and all that and walked away and was super pleased with myself. <laughs> Then about an hour later, I took a good look at the curtain and I had sewed the whole thing upside down and the pheasants were actually upside down floating on their heads. It was, shall we say, the last thing that I sewed on my daughter's beginning beginner sewing machine. <laughs> So by taking away the door and adding on the curtain, um, there was it actually created airflow in the cupboard, so we could use it for storing fermented foods or for slow fermentation. And to be quite honest, there were actually just too many doors opening into our small back hall anyway, so that was probably the main reason for removing the cupboard. So behind the curtain, we have a huge office-style water cooler. Yes, I know it is so not essential and I would not usually have one in the home, but we have had some stressful water issues in recent years here and we use it for our drinking water. So until those issues are completely resolved, we will be using it for now. It's also a great backup if the water supply fails and believe me, in our rural setting, it does sometimes. <laughs> Our well has even completely dried up before and we've had no water for weeks. It was a nightmare. <laughs> anyway, back to the larder. So we have three shelves or so holding all our food and on the very bottom we use the area to store all of our glass jars and bottles, a few picnic items like our blanket and picnic basket and even our trusty dehydrator. We only really pull out the dehydrator in the summer months as you might have seen with our recent strawberry leather recipe on YouTube. So we don't keep it on the worktop space in the kitchen because it is just so bulky and it's quite ugly as well <laughs> and it takes up so much space. So it's tucked away in here in the bottom. So on the top shelf I like to keep all of my lovely powders and potions that I call my superfoods and they are just powder dried foods and other items but it makes them sound a little more magical calling them my powders and potions. Anyway these are my additional superfoods I like to add to my meals and it usually involves adding them into my smoothie recipes for an additional boost or even for making things like raw chocolate. I love to use local foods and seasonal foods but feel that my health is at its best when I supplement and give myself a nutritional boost with these superfoods and they can be from like all over the world. <laughs> um, I do love my superfoods. So I call them superfoods, but and most marketing campaigns call them superfoods, but they are just foods at the end of the day. But they do have a high nutritional value. So I guess you could say they are foods with superpowers. <laughs> So in this lovely collection on my shelf, I have some spirulina, some maca powder, 
some cacao nibs, which I love to use to top off some lovely Scottish porridge, smoothie bowls and some bacon items as well. And there's lots of other things for um, using cacao nibs. And I also have some raw cacao, of course, as well. And it's my favourite. I love to make hot chocolate in the winter months with my raw cacao, some warm milk and a drizzle of raw honey. It is my absolute favourite warming drink. And I also keep additional jars of raw honey in here as well. But let's face it, we love raw honey in this house so much and there are never very often additional jars of this stuff in my house. <laughs> it's also pretty pricey to buy in bulk too so we tend to just buy a jar or two at a time um, and just use it that way. So I also have my hemp protein powder, acai berry powder and my absolute favourite hemp hearts. They are packed with beneficial fats and can be sprinkled on literally everything. I also love to sprinkle um, my hemp hearts onto smoothie bowls and salads and basically everything. There are just so many uses for them. Um, I also have some babao powder and I know I am so not pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> um, and it's really high in vitamin C and I, ha I have my immune boosting wild mushroom mix as well that I like to use as well. Um, as I mentioned before, I don't pick wild mushrooms due to my phobia of them, but I do consume powdered wild mushrooms that are beneficial to my health. I'll leave it up to the experts to pick them for me. <laughs> I also keep a load of seeds in here like pumpkin, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds. I use these for smoothies and for bacon and for lots of breakfast ideas as well. And even for salads as well. And I even have some brown sesame seeds. Um, and you can make up a batch of tahini with all these seeds. And you could even make up um, pumpkin seed butter or sunflower seed butter um, or make up a chia seed pudding as well. And there's also the odd jar of lentils in here too. And some stock cubes for a last minute soup if I don't have any broth available. And we also like to make um, our own nut butters as well. So I have almonds and cashews and um, I also have some pecans in here as well. So my favourite for making nut butter is almonds and cashew is probably my second favourite. So I do like to keep a stash of those in here as well. So there's also the odd jar of lentils and some stock cubes for a last minute soup if I don't have any broth available. I do love to make my own stocks and broths where I can, but it's not always possible. So I like to rely on a good low salt organic stock cube. And I love the Calo um, brand. They tend to do a variety of stock cubes and I just like to buy the vegetable one because I find it just goes with so many dishes. So I should probably note as well that I do try to keep things organic where possible and there's quite a lot of reasons why and maybe that's a conversation for another podcast. So I'm not going to mention that these things are organic or not as most of them are and I buy most of my superfood type items from Indigo Herbs in the UK and I find that they sell so many organic foods um, and I'm not affiliated with them at all in any way. I just love the company. I love what they sell. Um, so they sell so many nutritional foods and other health given items and they're probably my favourite supplier of this type of thing. Apart from supporting um, local health food shops, um, I do tend to buy most of my superfoods and nuts and seeds and other um, items like quinoa and stuff from Indigo Herbs. I just love the shop. <laughs> Um, so the rest of the items on the top shelf are some emergency soup cans and beans and things and also the odd tin of custard as well. <laughs> we do also have an emergency supply of food in another cupboard which would hopefully last us three weeks if ever we needed it. Um, we're not official preppers <laughs> but haven't been in situations where we could have benefited from some kind of emergency food supply. We've learned over the years to keep a small backup and with everything that's been going on lately in the world, there have been quite a few times that we've not had food in the house and have been unable to get to the shops and have had to rely on our emergency food backup. So it has actually been getting used quite a lot and it's actually quite depleted at the moment. So we do need to um, 
make a new stash of emergency food and I'm hoping to make another pod on what we have in our prep stash of food and how we rotate it or donate it. So I'll save that for another podcast instead of going off on another tangent. (laughs) So moving down the cupboard we have some flour and I love to buy flour from the Dove Organic Flour range but recently I've actually been buying flour from Shipton Mill and I've also been getting fresh yeast from them as well. I'm experimenting a bit more with bread and fresh yeast in the kitchen and my sourdough experiments are pretty much all fails at the moment so um, I'm getting there with my starter but I'm just going to keep trying with my sourdough but I'm experimenting a little bit more using fresh yeast so that's a bit exciting Um, and I just love bread making as well and I also love my bread machine. (laughs) So from ship to mill I have a variety of flours like rye flour, white, wholemeal and rye flour is really good for making um, a starter as well so I'm really trying to get my sourdough going with rye flour and I even have some bran for bread um, from them as well. I just love their flour and I find the Shipton Mill flour is really affordable and you can get it online as well and you can also buy it in bulk if you want to. Um, I just have some of the small bags at the moment and I will probably buy from bulk uh, from them in the future but um, I don't have any just now from in bulk from them because I have about 10 kilos left of my Dove's white flour so I'm working through that huge bag at the moment <laughs> and believe me we work through it pretty quickly actually. <laughs> Um, I haven't actually looked at grinding my own grains to make flour. I know some people do it and I have heard that it is um, more nutritionally beneficial for you but it's not something I've looked at at the moment and maybe be something I might do in the future. So moving on we also have baskets of noodles and rice and some emergency noodle pot type things for the boys. (laughs) Um, we also like to keep any pre-made snacks in here like bars and biscuits for cheese or soaring bars. They are my boys fave and we always have a couple of packets in here. <laughs> now, I know this is mostly like my long term storage but we do tend to keep some snacks and things in here as well. Um, and the bottom shelf is basically just all our glassware for storing food, preserving food and there are some other preserving items like sieves and jelly bags and things. Um, We also keep muslins in here for fermenting and for cheese making and as I was saying I'm pretty new to cheese making and um, I'd love to learn more and make some more of my own homemade cheeses but it's something that I am definitely a novice at at the moment. (laughs) So there are a few things I like to buy in bulk and I find this saves me money this way so flour is definitely one of them and as I mentioned I have 10 kilos of white flour in the cupboard at the moment. Um, I save so much money when I buy my flour in bulk though it's definitely way cheaper than the supermarket and it also makes me bake more as well if I know there is a huge bag of flour to get through (laughs) and it's always in the back of my mind when I reach for the supermarket bread that I could use that huge bag of flour in my pantry cupboard um, to make my own bread and I just love homemade bread as well it's so so good. (laughs) I've also bought many other items in bulk like maple syrup and I find that it's so much cheaper buying maple syrup in bulk than it is to buy those tiny little glass jars which cost about five pounds each and we tend to go through those ridiculously quickly. I mean I can use like a whole jar that size in a recipe (laughs) Um, and it's just so expensive doing it that way so I do really like to buy my maple syrup in bulk. When I buy my raw honey actually it is actually quite a large jar as well so I could say that that is like a bulk item too and I do find that that is a lot cheaper and it's such a high quality. I like to buy my raw honey from the raw honey shop and they have a huge variety of raw honeys. They are my absolute favourite honey supplier and I have never been disappointed with the raw honey from them. They are so so good. Um, so some other items that we buy are tinned foods like tomatoes. I like to buy those in those big cases of 12 and coconut milk is something else that we use quite a bit of as well. I love to get organic coconut milk. I just find it has such a superior taste. Um, my favourite place to buy bulk foods has to be Suma Whole Foods. They are just fantastic but the only thing is you need to order a huge amount of food because there is a minimum order amount um, especially because we are 
classed as highlands up here. So we, our minimum order amount is quite a lot, but you could split up an order with friends. Um, and we used to do that through like a food co-op a long, long, long time ago when my kids were little. And um, we used to shop with a food co-op and we would put orders in together and split up the the costs. And um, it saved us so much money and you could just buy a few little things and and collectively you would, you would cover the minimum order amount. So it really worked out that way. So it's just something to think about. So what I did for a while was I also put aside a little of our food shopping budget and then I ordered from Suma every three or four months because I couldn't afford to order every month because the minimum amount is quite high. Um, and this way I pay less for our food in the long run and I also managed to buy a wide variety of bulk items. Um, so it, we had quite a good stock for a while in the larder cupboard but um, I kind of got out of the habit of doing that but it's something that I might um, start doing again in the future as well but the other thing is though um, if I personally have a ton of snack foods in the house <laughs> in bulk my kids will quite easily get through a ton of snack foods in a short amount of time <laughs> and I'm also quite tempted myself to keep going back for the snacks so there is a balance to be found when buying these type of foods in bulk <laughs> But you definitely can save money from your more staple items like pasta, rice, flour um, when you're buying these items in bulk. And even also the superfood items from Indigo Herbs, when you buy more, you end up saving money. So that's something to think about as well if you're using those things quite a lot. Um, so another thing is quite often people say to me they don't have space for additional food storage aside from the kitchen and I totally get that and understand that not every house has a spare cupboard to call their pantry or their larder and believe me we could fill this cupboard quite easily with other stuff if it wasn't dedicated to food items um, and if you don't have a spare cupboard space to designate as your larder you could also use other spaces in your home such as converting your un under the stairs to like a cupboard area or using pull out drawers under the beds or even clear out that old Tupperware cupboard that um, seems to spill out every time you open the door. If you think it's bad now, believe me, Tupperware was everywhere in the 80s. <laughs> it was spilling out of all cupboards and there was the also the odd Tupperware party to look forward to in our home when we were kids and oh how we love to sneak down for those sandwiches and cakes my mum would prepare. <laughs> anyway my point is you can use other spaces in the home it doesn't have to be a designated area in the kitchen or or even next to the kitchen and this also goes for your emergency food stash as well you can basically store it anywhere you have the space to. So we have a few favourite last minute larder cupboard meal ideas Pasta with tomato sauce is probably our most made larder cupboard meal and you could even throw in a tin of vegetables or use whatever is left in your fridge like scraps of vegetables or um, what's in the freezer to add in additional nutrition and if you have a scrap of cheese and you're left in your fridge grate it on the top. It's the ultimate last minute empty kitchen cupboard meal idea and we love it and it's so so quick to prepare. It's saved our skin so many times. Thai curry is another favourite meal um, to make from our cupboard using up a Thai meal kit, a can of coconut milk and maybe a tin of vegetables or some vegetables that are left over in the fridge, just whatever you've got available or even from the freezer. You could even chop up some leftover meats into it as well. Um, we love curry with noodles or rice and there's usually always some noodles or rice in the larder. So it's also a good idea to keep a few sauce jars and sachets in your um, larder cupboard for a quick meal and we we like to keep maybe about three or four different types of um, sachets in here just just um, and they're actually hiding in our noodle box by the way I forgot to mention those <laughs> um, so we also love using up the tins of soup for lunch sometimes if there's nothing available or if somebody doesn't like the soup I've made we fall back on a tin or two from the larder cupboard and you could also throw together a quick pizza from your larder cupboard ingredients using up some flour supplies, some dried yeast and some leftovers in the fridge. Yeah. Cheesy macaroni is another quick meal idea from the cupboard and maybe even an egg fried vegetable rice or an Indian rice dish using frozen vegetables or tinned vegetables again. Um, 
and like a jar of Indian sauce. Um, these are just a few last minute meal ideas that you can make from the larder cupboard and there are so many other things like lentil and bean soups or even a hummus for lunch and um, for like sandwiches that can be made from cupboard staple ingredients. I have even made emergency flatbreads <laughs> from um, the flour in the cupboard before. We just didn't have anything in for lunch so uh, and I didn't have time to make bread so I just whipped up some dough and I made flatbreads. <laughs> So it's a good idea to create a list of your meal ideas from your larder cupboard ingredients and stick it up inside the cupboard. And this way, if you're stuck for um, a meal, you can check your list out and see what you can whip up really quickly from your dried and tinned ingredients. Um, it's just something that might help you in the kitchen. So tonight, I actually had no idea what we were having for dinner and I lost my food, my meal planning, um, ideas that I had written down on a scrap piece of paper because I had the shopping list on the other side and I had lost it at the supermarket. So I had no idea what we were eating even though we had some food in the fridge. So I ended up whipping up a pizza meal with a few leftover tomatoes um, to make a fresh sauce and I also chopped up some odds and ends of vegetables that we had in the fridge and we used some leftover pieces of cheese as well. And you know what, it was one of those last minute throw together meals that was so, so good. And you'd think I had it all planned out, but nope, I hadn't. It was just one of those last minute things that seemed to save the day. So I hope you've picked up some ideas for your own pantry cupboard space and have some ideas on what to stock in there long term and maybe some inspiration for some last minute meal ideas from here as well. And I really look forward to speaking to you all again soon. So take care. Lots of love. Bye. You've been listening to the We Larder podcast series. Click subscribe to keep in touch with our new episodes released every Saturday. You'll find inspiration for delicious, wholesome family food, natural living ideas and some organic gardening along the way. Thanks for listening to the We Larder. Thank you.